Okay, one thing I really love about working in opera and working in narrative is it gives you a lot more um, space to play and still allows the people experiencing the piece a window in. And so I like things that are weird um, sounding. So the story is a Southern Gothic ghost story where we meet a child and her mother, kind of in isolated Tennessee. When Ellen and Julianne first approached me with the story, I was really taken with the idea. Um, it was clearly coming from a very personal place for Ellen. It was a story that had involved some of her family members and her history of growing up in the South. Hearing her talk about it and talk about their ideas and sort of the mythic qualities of what they were going for really, really sparked my imagination. In Winter's Child, there are a variety of sound worlds, but mainly two that coalesce into something and then degrade. The story starts right before Child's 15th birthday. It's on the eve of her birthday which is a big milestone because she has had three older sisters who have all died under mysterious circumstances just before their 15th birthday. She's visited by her oldest sister and then by her other two older sisters and they each come and tell her a component of a message. They're trying to communicate something to her. I knew I wanted the ghosts to be choral and have this multi-dimensional flavor to all of their sound that was slightly un not understandable and dreamlike. I try to use this narrative as a way to explore a wide range of sounds from things that are pop derived to things that are like absolutely noise derived. This piece has been a great exploration about how to get some of those sounds that you can get from degrading recordings to how you can actually get that on an instrument. You know, for example, if you press really hard with your bow, you get this really scratchy sound. And so how can they use that in moments where a child is really uncomfortable just to create a little unease? Characters do each have their own definitive voice. The sisters really function as a unit. They each have their own character and their own specific season. When we were initially characterizing them, we sort of set each one to a season so that between the four sisters, they create a calendar year. The mother's voice, because she her roots were in more of a speaking part, her language is a bit more clipped and it's more direct. Child, on the other hand, you know, she's a dreamer. She speaks in more poetic phrases and more imaginative phrases. In the section of first take, we'll see this first sound world set up, which is a folkier sound world. The sound world of the mother and child before the ghosts enter child's world. After the ghosts enter, they bring things like electronics, they bring this kind of wobbly sensation to the notes where you can't exactly pin down what it is. And as the piece goes on, those things mesh together into this much darker place. <laughs> 